Pinterest is one of those platforms that it feels like everybody knows exists. But it also feels like it's one of those platforms that not very many people understand or people don't understand how to use it to grow their business specifically. And as a result, very few people take the time to learn Pinterest and the, the power that it can have to grow a business. But you, of course, are different because you uh, clicked on this video and you are looking to take advantage of the power of Pinterest marketing. In this video, I'm gonna be walking through my Pinterest strategy on how I use Pinterest to get millions of views and clicks monthly to my website, all for free without using ads. I'm gonna be walking through this, the foundation on how to set your account up for success, and then make sure you stick around to the end because I'm gonna be walking through ways to automate some of the processes, uh, it, ways to find inspiration for pins, and how to actually go through and find best practices for pins as well. Now, if that all sounds awesome to you, then you are in the right place. Now, one thing I do ask before we for, begin is one small favor before I go through and spill all the secrets of Pinterest marketing that I know, and that is to please go down to the down below and hit that like button, and also while you're down there, consider subscribing if you do want to learn more about Pinterest marketing. Also, feel free to leave a comment anytime throughout the video if you have any questions, anything that you wanted to get more in depth on, I will be sure to go through and reply to all of those comments. Now, without further ado, let's jump into the actual video. Now, one of the th first things I do wanna establish is why you should consider using Pinterest for your business. The first reason why you should consider using Pinterest is because Pinterest is a massive search engine. It's actually the third largest search engine that we do have and behind Google and YouTube, which are obviously very big players. Now, obviously Pinterest is a social media platform, but first and foremost, it is a search engine. When people go to Pinterest, they are going with the intent to search for something, whether it's the intent to buy something, to research a product, to learn something, um, or to just go through and uh, find inspiration for different pins, whatever it may be. There's very high intent when a user is going to Pinterest. Now, going along with being a search engine, another reason why you should consider using Pinterest is because the content that you pin uh, post on Pinterest is evergreen. Because it is searchable, um, when you post something and if it ranks, you have the opportunity to rank for that and get clicks and traffic to your website for years to come. On other social media platforms, usually the algorithm shows that post to a user for 28 to 48 hours, and then you have to go through and create another post to get that engagement. With Pinterest, it's very much a snowball effect where you, if you have multiple pins ranking, uh, it could pay you dividends basically for, for years to come. And that's why I really like Pinterest because it's like one of those things where you can set it and forget it kind of thing and reap the benefits for, uh, like I said, a, a long time. Now, last thing is the user base. There's currently 431 million um, active monthly users on Pinterest. So there's a massive amount of audience um, inside of there. And we're gonna talk a little bit more in depth on who that audience is and what that looks like and how to identify if your business is a good option to be on Pinterest. So the first thing I do want to do before we get into the weeds a little bit more is to show you a way that you can quickly identify if Pinterest might be a good fit for your business. So if we come over here and we look and we actually get inside of Pinterest, the first thing that I want you to do is whatever your business may be, just go to Pinterest and actually search that niche or that product, whatever it may be. For here, let's say that we are selling cameras. So we're just gonna type in here, cameras, and I want to create a profile all dedicated to cameras, and I'm wondering, is Pinterest right for my business? What I, what I encourage you to do is type in whatever your product or service may be, come in here, and then you're gonna wanna click on this, and you're gonna want to uh, click on, make sure you're on all pins. From there, you're gonna notice three little tabs here, explore shops and profiles. Come over here to profiles, and here's where you can start seeing what other people are currently doing in that space. And if you're noticing that there's people with massive amounts of followers, you can you can bet that Pinterest is working really well for their business and they're inside of your niche, um, right? So if you're seeing this, this is a very good sign that you should probably be on Pinterest and be uh, doing some things inside of here, right? So for cameras, there's all of these different profiles that are getting a ton of engagement, lots of followers, and this is also a great way for you to go and find inspiration for things that might be working. Uh, just a quick little tip there. So I encourage you to go through and search for your product or service in the search bar, whatever it may be. If you're seeing profiles in there that have a lot of engagement, then you know it's a proven method. Now, if you see ones in there that have less engagement or it's smaller um, for your niche, maybe it's an opportunity for you be, to be a trailblazer and introduce that audience inside of Pinterest, but it's less of a secure bet, if that makes sense. Once you've established whether your, your business should be on Pinterest or not, the first step is for you to actually go through and define your goal for what you want to accomplish for Pinterest. There's lots of different goals that you could be looking at. The first one is, do you want to get more sales? 
Do you want to get more leads? Do you want to generate more traffic to your website? Do you want to generate more followers on Pinterest? Or do you just want general brand awareness? Depending on what the answer to that question may be, the your objectives inside of Pinterest may be a little bit different and the strategy may be different, but just know what I go through in this video is going to help with basically all of those bullet points and set up that foundation. So now that we have, once you have uh, identified your objective, the next thing that we need to do is actually go through and start creating your business account. So if you're very brand new to Pinterest, you just need to go to pinterest.com obviously. And the first thing you're gonna wanna do is come over here to um, your profile. Mine looks a little bit different because I'm just going to add an account. And when you go to create an account, you're gonna notice there's gonna, it's gonna ask you for a couple different options. You wanna come through and create a business account. The reason why you wanna create a business account is because as you can see, you're gonna be able to grow your audience, drive traffic, sell more products, and it also gives you more analytics. Um, so I do recommend that you be inside of a business account. A lot of people sometimes worry, well, if I'm a business account, is uh, is uh, Pinterest going to limit my organic reach? My answer to that is simply no. If you have good content, Pinterest is still gonna show it. I have a business account and I have not had any problems with it um, uh, limiting my reach because, because of that. Now, once you've gone through and created your account and added your headline, put in your profile picture, the next step is very important. And this is how I grew my, my Pinterest account from zero to where it is today. And it's actually starting with creating boards. Now, before you create boards, you, I need you to step back, maybe pause this video and think about four or five areas where you want your business, uh, four or five topics for your business that you want to show up for. For instance, if we go into my DIY boards and we go into the analytics here, I wanna show you why this is so important. So if we go into the overview here, you notice that I have, uh, it shows me my top impressions by boards. You notice that one of the boards that I created was this DIY house projects. The other one that I had was this kitchen island ideas. Next one, X at wall uh, living room ideas. Now for the DIY space, it's kind of easy. Basically what I would do is if I was about to create a project, I would first create a board for that project and start taking other people's pins and putting them inside that board so the board started getting traffic so that when I then had the content, my own actual pins, I would then put them in that board and then it already had some impressions inside of there. And I can show you what I mean. So if we look inside of this DIY house project board, we look here, obviously it's getting a lot of traction right now, but if we scroll down, you'll notice that a lot of these top pins are my specific pins, but the ones down here where this board actually started, um, most of them, are actually taken from other people's boards. So these first boards that are these first pins down here, I took 20 or 30 pins, put them all inside that had to do with this DIY house projects. And then I would stick them inside of here so that when people were searching for the, the term DIY house projects, my board was starting to show up before I had even started creating any pins. So let me show you how to go through and do this. So as you can see here, here's our, um, these aren't mine, these aren't mine, but then when you start to get to the top here, these are the pins that I actually went through and created. And it's just a, a, a way for you to basically double dip because your boards are getting impressions and then you're putting your your pins inside of those boards that are now getting more impressions as well. So like I said, once your account is created, the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is come here to the home tab. You're gonna to come to this saved tab. You're gonna click on this little plus thing. You're gonna to want to hit uh, boards here. And then here's where you're gonna to wanna to start creating this uh, these boards. So, so for instance, I'm getting ready to do an office makeover. So I want to create a board that is for office makeover. So we're gonna name this office makeover. If you wanted to keep the board secret for now, you could, but I recommend just keeping it public. We're gonna hit create here. And then now Pinterest is literally gonna make this so easy. So it's gonna say, save some ideas for your new board. All you do is go through and save, 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 save. Like I like this one. I like the look of this one, this one, this one. Uh, this one looks great and uh, basically just go through and do this until you have 20 to 30 pins at least inside of that board. That way when people are searching for the term office makeover and they see, if they do see your board pop up, they actually see that there's content in there and, and an organized kind of theme. So we're gonna go through and add this. And as you see, that only took me like, this is taking me, we're, I'm doing this real time, it's taking me like less than a minute to add all of these pins inside of here and it makes it so easy. And essentially what you're doing is you're utilizing other people's content to create to create your board and once people start clicking inside of there and getting that social proof or getting those that traction then you can put your pins inside of that board so we're going to hit done here now that we've gone through and we've added 20 to you know 20 to 50 pins inside of 
you know, four or five boards for the categories that we want to be showing up for inside of Pinterest. It is now time for us to go through and create our own pins that we will mix inside of these boards to help get us even more impressions and clicks to our actual website. Now, there are lots of different tools to create pins. The tool that I prefer and that I personally use is Canva. The reason why I use Canva is because it's very easy, drag and drop system. If you're new to Canva, you will love it. Just go check it out, it's, for, it's free. They do have a pro account as well, but you can get by with the free one. All you need to do is come here to Canva, hit create designs and then just type in Pinterest and it will uh, you can choose your size there then you'll notice they have a bunch of different templates that you can use to create your pins once we add them inside of here everything is drag and drop very simple and the awesome thing about Pinterest is while you are inside of here say that I went through and created this and I wanted to publish it directly to Pinterest I could do that I actually don't go through and publish them right when I'm done I create a mass bulk amount and then I go through and post them all at once for the entire month and I'll show you exactly how to do that in the next steps but I do want to show you how you can publish these is say I wanted to add this to our board that we just created I could just hit publish Pinterest here and then as you can see it asks for the board that I want I'm going to choose the board for office makeover there it is we're going to add the title let's pretend this is an awesome title um, and then we can add the description and then here's where the money's at right this is where you add your destination URL the place where you want to direct people to whether it has your affiliate links or your lead generation or the product that you want to sell this is where the, um, the power of Pinterest comes into play because they see this awesome image from you they read about it they want to know more about it and then they click and then they go to your website um, uh, so like I said if you if you then wanted to go through and schedule out your your posts for later you could click it here and then schedule out that post it ends up looking something like this so this is my content calendar for January. Like I said, this is how I like to do it. I like to schedule all the posts for the entire month so I can just sit down for an hour, do bulk amounts of Pinterest pins inside of Canva. I build them inside of Canva and then I schedule them inside of Canva. Now I will say, um, if you do wanna use the content planner, it is a paid uh, Canva plan that you need to have. Uh, you, I think it's like 10, $10, $15 a month. It's well worth it for me. I'd highly recommend it if you want to use this content planner. That way it just automates the entire process. Like I said, I spend like two hours at the end of every month just planning out all my content, putting it in there, and then I forget about it. And uh, while we're here, uh, one thing that I do want to bring up is the the amount that you should be pin or the the frequency that you should be pinning. As you can see here um, inside of my account, I I, I post maybe uh, just about every other day or every third day. Now, when I first started, I was posting multiple times a day inside of Pinterest just to get that momentum going. But once you do have the momentum, don't feel like you need to continue that and uh, posting every day. Uh, and, and that even being said, if posting every day is feeling overwhelming to you, uh, don't let that trip you up. If maybe posting once a week is your goal, then set that goal and just stick with it. Um, whatever it, whatever your goal may be, just pick a number and stick with that number, whatever the frequency may be. And then if you feel that you're getting confident maybe posting once a week, then move it up to maybe every other day. And then you can start slowly make, moving into daily. If you want to go crazy right from the beginning and see the growth potential, you can start posting it multiple times a day. That's the beauty of Pinterest is you can be posting you know, 10 to 15 times a day, but just keep that in mind. I don't think there's a you know when you when you talk, when you hear people talking about that you know you have to post daily I don't think that's true I think whatever you do you just need to be consistent if you want to learn more about my whole content strategy you can check out this video right here where I walk through this how to set this calendar up how to automate this process for pinning uh, check that out if you're interested in that process now there's a few other things to keep in mind when you are creating Pinterest pins and that is the actual formats there are a lots of, there are a few different types of Pinterest pins as you see here if we come over to Pinterest and we go to create you're gonna see create a pin create an ad create an idea pin if we create a pin you can do a video pin a static uh, pin and then there's also these idea pins I do want to walk through the difference between those and best practices for those pins so if you come over here to business.pinterest.com forward slash create creative best practices. I will link this down below. Uh, Pinterest actually goes through and walks through some of the best practices that you should have for your pins. So if you see, if you look here, uh, make the, the pins that, make pins that perform, it walks through the exact spend. So for standard pins, here's the aspect ratios, and then it walks through you know bullet points on things that you should be doing, and if you want more information on that, you can click on these. So make your brand your focal point, include logos, add text overlay, optimize your pin copy, and make sure you check your links. And as you scroll down here, video pins, it has the same thing. So start strong and make it actionable. Lead with a clear hook within the first few seconds of your videos. Choose the right length, show don't tell. Um, pick a strong cover image and then optimize your pin copy for those Pinterest video ads or I see saying ads for those Pinterest videos and then idea pins. Uh, the idea pins have been crushing it 
for me spe specifically. Uh, Pinterest idea or idea pins are a little new to Pinterest, and if you aren't utilizing them, I highly recommend it. I know that a lot of people aren't necessarily happy the the moves that Pinterest has made away from static images more to favoring videos, but that's just the way of 2022. It's a huge trend. Obviously, TikTok started this trend. Uh, if you can create good videos and put them on Pinterest, they will blow up, and you will have all the more advantage over your competition. And that's kind of what these idea pins do is think video first, make your own content, show your personality, show the right details, and then uh, check, 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 whatever that means. Uh, and they also, you can download this guide right here, which shows, um, I think I downloaded it already, yeah, right here. It shows these, um, this little idea for best practices. So go through and check that out as well. This is where I find a lot of inspiration for my ads is coming through this Pinterest uh, uh, business center. As you can see here, they have lots of ideas for Pinterest business ads, why Pinterest, and then making pins, Pinterest for creators. So I highly recommend checking out this resource for inspiration. And that is pretty much everything that I had today. If you enjoyed the video today and you wanted to get more details on these strategies, I recommend checking out these two videos right here. They will walk you through more in depth on Pinterest SEO, how to rank your pins, how to create your pins, and the whole automation strategy. Uh, this video is mostly just for a general overview on how to get started with Pinterest marketing. If you found it helpful, don't forget to subscribe down below. We'll see you in the next one.